Hello everybody, my name is Christoph Kroll. I'm senior IT project manager at Porsche AG within the Volkswagen Group and today I'm here with Chris William, senior SAP innovation architect at AWS. We are happy to share our experiences on building smart factory solutions with SAP and AWS technologies. Let's start with a short look on the agenda. So first of all, I want to introduce to you the VW Group. Afterwards, um, I will show you the uh, Volkswagen Digital Production Platform or short DPP. And then I will explain how we implemented the digital production platform here at Porsche. Afterwards, Chris Williams will take over and explain you the key requirements for SAP and IoT solutions as well as how to bring an SAP system to the cloud. Uh, last but not least, we want to close our session with a demo of our implementation we jointly developed at Porsche Zuffenhausen. So the Volkswagen Group is one big group which consists out of 12 different brands. So we have the classical car manufacturers or car maker brands, Audi, Skoda, Seat and Volkswagen. And uh, the luxury and sport car brands, as well as one uh, motorcycle brand, Ducati, and also three brands which are building trucks. So altogether, we have more than 120 factories worldwide, which we want to digitize uh, in the next five years. The Volkswagen Group, in total, we have around about 670,000 employees, and we will and we build every year around about 11 million cars. Together we generate uh, around about 250 billion revenue a year. So these are the key facts on the Volkswagen Group and now I want to jump over to the digital production platform at Volkswagen. So in an alliance together with AWS we would like to extend the current uh, service and solution offering of AWS um, according to the needs of, of our production and logistic departments. Um, we truly believe that the digitalization and cloud computer computing will be one of the key uh, facts and, and key elements uh, to achieve our goals uh, to increase the productivity by 30% within the fi next five years. So this is the target and the goal we have in the production um, area to save money um, and to become uh, the leader in digitalization in the automation area. So how we want to achieve this? For sure, we want to increase our flexibility. This means that we want to build our cars still on the same line, but increase the, the individualization of each car to a maximum. Therefore, we need a harmonized IT landscape. So for example, a seamless integration between SAP systems and cloud solutions is key to have a high transparency and to know by one click um, the, the status of the production lines. This is um, one of the things we built together with um, AWS and with, S with the SAP solutions to have our data centralized and always uh, transparent. With this, we can reduce, for example, unplanned maintenance or unplanned downtimes. And for as soon as we start with our data lake and collecting data over a long time, we also can use the complete toolkit of AI uh, solutions to optimize our production uh, workflows in the future. Okay, now enough uh, with the theory. So now, uh, we are looking on the implementation of the DPP at Porsche. So when it comes to the first use case at Porsche, we had a, a business problem to combine the SAP and the DPP world. So therefore we had clear objectives to combine real-time uh, information from the shop floor, from IoT signals and sensors with the SAP systems. Therefore we had um, more than one challenge. One was for sure to access those uh, IoT sensors and signals from the shop floor, provide them to the cloud and pre-process data there. But the much bigger challenge was to access our uh, SAP system and to combine the two technologies um, from on-prem to the cloud. 
So I would like to summarize a little bit the experiences we made in, um, in our first use cases with the key requirements you should take if you want to implement a use case combining SAP and IoT solutions. So first of all, um, you need to align with your long-term strategy how you want to renew your IT landscape. As I mentioned earlier, it's key to have a harmonized IoT landscape. Then the second part is for sure the DevOps mantra. So there's no use of, of developing systems and then just hand it over to some operation teams. So this is what we learned there is the only way to, to gain speed and to, to implement those big changes is a DevOps solution. Then uh, security by design or the security first approach is also key for us. So while building our systems, we are always focusing on the security requirements. And last but not least, we, you must also be aware of the SAP uh, technical depth and, and uh, get experience from both uh, sides, SAP and cloud solutions. With this, I would like to hand over to Chris and he will show you how you can bring an SAP system to the cloud. All right, thank you, Christoph, uh, and I appreciate the intro. I'm Chris Williams with the SAP Global Specialty Practice within AWS ProServe. Um, and so one of the main issues like you, we talked about is bringing SAP to the cloud. Um, SAP isn't cloud native out of the box. Uh, and that leads to several challenges. Walking through those challenges, one of which is a lack of IoT APIs on the SAP side. Um, being able to communicate with IoT devices in a smart factory is, is very important. And the capabilities to talk natively, um, if not present, make it very difficult for those devices to kick off the necessary business processes. Um, the other difficulty is extending um, SAP into a serverless or container-based uh, framework. Uh, SAP is born, wasn't born in the cloud, so they're based on primarily servers, uh, servers storage, and those aspects. Um, but IoT, on the other hand, is based mostly on serverless or container-based platforms. So merging those two is something that we definitely had to tackle. Again, SAP is also highly customized. Um, every business process, um, years and years of features and bugs have been developed and customized into the SAP platform, making it very important for the business to operate and run uh, and continue using those code bases, as well as it making it difficult to then integrate a highly standardized IoT platform with a customized ERP backend. So I wanna walk you through the key tenants of the solution. Um, the first of which is enabling AWS to call SAP native capabilities, and those capabilities being OData, SOAP, BAPIs, RFC-enabled function modules, um, all natively through AWS's serverless framework. This capability leveraging um, on top of that the business logic in ABAP makes it a, the best of both worlds, allowing IoT to operate in their space, but businesses to take advantage of the capabilities within ABAP itself. Um, and we want to lean on AWS for microservices um, and the serverless exp expertise. That allows AWS to do what AWS does well. Then we lean on SAP to, for the bespoke business processes and everything that's been built into those workflows and those capabilities, allowing the business to continue to operate and focus on what it does best. So overcoming hurdles and defining end states was one of our main goals on, on handling some of this capability. So one of the first hurdles was how do we translate an IoT message um, to an SAP message it can understand? How do we handle that translation? Um, so the end state really that we aimed for and what we achieved was taking MQTT and delivered as native SAP calls. So handling that translation so the IoT team could focus on getting the right message across and the SAP team executing the right business process with that message. Um, the, one, of this, one of the other main hurdles we hit was an air gap network. Oftentimes your IoT based systems, which are probably on the plant four, or um, your SAP systems, which are probably in a back office network, aren't connected. So how do we, how do we manage that um, and what do we implement? So what we ended up doing was working with the DPP platform and Porsche in a minimal hop, low latency, high throughput network. And that allow us to basically remove unnecessary hops that we had to go through the network, increasing the return time um, of those packets between the devices and SAP and allowing business processes to be near real time. One of the last and the third one was support of IoT to devices across all plants, as well as all SAP variants. So one of the main problems here is you may have a call rocker scenario, you may have a camera, you may have a various amount of IoT devices sitting in your plant floor. You want the IoT and the plant floor to focus on what problems they need to solve and finding the right device. 
But at the same time, you have various SAP uh, systems sitting in these back offices. They may be different versions. They may be different uh, functionalities that need to be supported there. So one of our capabilities was to make it as easy as possible using infrastructure as code, CI, CD, and an API first framework in order to bridge that gap and make it seamless to deploy across any plant, any IoT device, and support any variant of SAP. So what we set out to deliver was a simple integration between SAP and IoT. Our main goal was to keep it native, keep it simple. So on the left-hand side, you can see here IoT devices that are spanning any number of different plants. They could be call rockers, like I said, they could be cameras, they could be really anything that can talk MQTT or any other API first language and allow it to go through the SAP connector. And the SAP connector was really what we deployed to make that translation happen. So we take the heavy lift of taking any, any IoT message and then being able to translate it over to an SAP native call whether that calls a function module, a BAPI, an RFC, but at the same time making this uh, deployable across any plant, any account, any AWS landscape, uh, and in any SAP system. And really what that achieved was it allowed businesses to focus mostly on the business problem of what they needed to do, tackle, like out of stock or um, you know, a temperature reading was high or any variance in any device and allow it to then seamlessly kick off a process on SAP. So the IoT devices didn't have to worry about understanding, okay, what type of messages SAP need, need in order to act on it. And SAP didn't need to understand, okay, what kind of IoT device am I dealing with? The SAP connector allows this translation to happen seamlessly, all serverless, all native, um, and all deployed with DevOps capabilities. So where did this leave us? At the end, uh, we evaluated where did we come from? And the old process was an individual on the shop floor was going around manually checking um, stock. You know, They would look in bins, they would say, okay, I'm low here, oh, I'm completely out. How, no one knows how long it was out for. Uh, and then they would go over to SAP, log into the SAP GUI, kick off a uh, replenishment. And then at that point, a new material would, would be issued and a transport order would then go through to restock. The new process though, completely removed the manual checking. IoT devices were automatically checking to see what the device, uh, what, what stock was in place. And then it was systematically invoking the necessary SAP business process to then kick off the replenishment without any human intervention. This allows us to scale and allows the uh, shop floor workers to focus on more imperative uh, business processes and keep innovating the supply chain mechanisms that are operating the shop floor. Now I wanted to turn it over to uh, back to Christoph, who's going to do an out of stock to automated restock uh, demo um, of our solution. Okay, thanks, Chris. So I will jump now into our software as a service application, which we built jointly at Porsche Zuffenhausen. So now we start with the view on the UI of our SaaS uh, software as a service solution, which manages uh, the IoT sensors in the shop floor. Now you see on the, on the screen, uh, WIPI geschlossen, which means the sensor is closed. As soon as our coworker takes off the first box, the orange sensor gets opened and the signal is transferred to the DPP. In our software as a service solution, the data is pre-processed and after a timeout of around about 10 seconds, the signal is transferred to the SAP system. There we use standard OData services to start a standard workflow within the SAP. Now the colleague jumps into the SAP system and you will see that the transport order is created and the workflow for material replenishment is started. With this, we build a digital end-to-end -end process and help our customer to automate his process. To summarize this solution and um, our fundamentals for operation modernization. What we learned from this use case um, was to, um, that we have many to many um, relationships between our different IT systems. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we need a harmonized IT landscape within our production facilities. Currently we having um, huge communication amounts between different systems. And this is our, was our idea to create one connector account and one um, 
dedicated relationship between our cloud solution and our SAP systems. So the second point is um, most people believe that SAP and AWS or IoT is like oil and water. For us, it's a seamless integration and a clear with. So together with this, both technologies, we would like to modernize our complete IT uh, production landscape. The elasticity and the security is key for us as well. So like I mentioned, the security is something we have in always in mind when we're building those solutions, as well as the uh, elasticity. The fourth point is also key for the, our complete uh, DPP program, that we can scale out and deploy our solutions to different brands and plants in, in the whole group. So this helps us to leverage the potential of the DPP. Last but not least, we are always focusing on, um, on our business side. So we, are, we learn from AWS to work backwards from our customers and to have our business and our customer always in mind. I would like to summarize and close the session with a quote of Mark Gekeler, who is part of the um, and member of the C uh, cloud business office of the DPP. He was the driver and, and he starts the initiative to integrate the SAP and the AWS solutions. And he said, with the help of the AWS ProServe SAP specialty practice, we've built a scalable integration between our SAP system and the digital production platform, which will help us, the whole uh, Volkswagen Group, to build innovative solutions based on the both technologies. With this, I want to say thank you for your attention, and I hope you enjoyed our today's session.